All right, looks like it's on. You want to take the handle, Tyler? Yeah, sure. And you, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Yep. Um, cool. All right. So this is the our weekly uh, OSF meeting. Um, so we're gonna do the main purpose of the meeting today is to go over the project brainstorm and figure out like what we're gonna do as the first project as OSF. But there's a, a couple other housekeeping items we want to go over before we do that. Um, one is just going oh, talking about like the Discord and moving over to the Discord. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll read through the agenda real quick. So we're going to talk about the Discord, which we've been experimenting with for the past couple weeks. Uh, the Notion, which just finished building up today, which is what you're looking at right now. Uh, and then the open projects and tasks, which is kind of like a process different from the proposal process, which we'll go over in a second. And then finally, we'll end with the project brainstorm. Uh, and so for anybody like listening in, um, when we do the project brainstorm, like you still have an opportunity to contribute um, to that brainstorm, just add it to the document um, after this. And the brainstorm will actually never end. Like we're always <laughs> gonna be brainstorming for the life of this organization. So like you can always have ideas and it's fine. Uh, but this is just a time to get us like kickstarted and get some momentum and like start executing on a project by, you know, next meeting. Um, all right, let's do the first one. Moving over to the Discord. So, um, have y'all, uh, Parker, Corey, do you have y'all check out the Discord? I'm assuming. Like, I know you have actually. Uh, what, what do you guys think about it? Just in terms of like as a tool, both for like the board and the web dev groups, but like also for the full organization. Like, does it seem something useful and like an improve significant improvement over Skype? Um, I think so. Uh, I think uh, actually Joe, Corey, and I were the ones who said uh, in response to your message, it works for us. Um, I think we're all fairly familiar with it. And uh, I've seen Corey, Joe uh, interacting with other Discord servers before. Um, so I think uh, we can go forward seeing uh, trying to get as many other people to transfer as possible and getting them to frequent the app. Um, because I think the uh, potential thing, and this is with Skype too, is that it's just an app installed on their phones without notifications, and then it just uh, gets dusty and is never checked. Um, so, uh, but uh, I think a lot of the people who, with that with Skype, uh, there's a very low chance of them helping with the project. I think Onalu just randomly checking this Skype chat and uh, being able to build a website was sort of a, a freak thing. Um, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I, I, uh, I like the capabilities of discord, uh, compared to Skype, certainly. Yeah, I, I would agree with yeah, I mean, basically all of that. Um, so going forward as to implementing discord and, uh, getting people using it as the main thing, uh, because you were making that point earlier, um, Tyler, uh, that um, if it's both ways, two different things we're using, um, it doesn't really work well having two platforms and two communication methods. Um, what are your thoughts on how we get people to move over from <clears throat> Skype to Discord? I, th I think people are going to move over once we have projects that are going on. I think once we come up with some ideas and are like, hey, we're working on this and we're discussing it within the Discord. Uh, and if we send private messages within the Discord to other people that we're working with, I think it'll naturally happen. <clears throat> so yeah, I just let them know that we have agree. like some kind of scholarship or something to do, you know, like. I don't know, that's kind of in general how you get like movement and traffic just kind of have something going on over there, some kind of activity, specifically something that has something that people want, right? Like if people want, uh, you know, a scholarship for to go like on a weekend retreat, right? Maybe it's a hundred dollars or something that covers like some kind of meals or like a, I don't know, like that's the great way to it. Like it kind of sounds like baiting or trapping, but that, that really is like the principle. Um, just on a different level, like essentially people go where they want to go. So if we kind of like just demonstrate how um, 
or kind of like just work those things in, right? Make it somewhere that people want to go. And then people will naturally go there. One person tells another person. Um, so have something where it's kind of like some degree of rewarding, even if that reward is just appreciation or gratitude. Um, and like kind of, I don't know, that'll naturally get the activity and stuff that we want. Yeah, I, uh, I like that the idea, Corey. I mean, I think to, to build on that a little bit, like, I think one easy thing we can do is switch it out on the website um, to move from Discord, like, because there's like a, a, a link to the Skype <laughs> website. So switch that to be Discord. So you can make a task for that. Uh, and then kind of gently directing people, like, when you, if we could all pitch in on this, like, if you see people like talking on any of those channels, just like kindly direct them back to. <laughs> To Discord. That's yeah. awesome. That all sounds great. And then but then yeah, I think Corey to your point, like once there's more stuff happening on on the on uh Discord and there's more projects, I think it'll naturally die. But I do want to like really like keep reminding people to go to the Discord because if they're not on that, like there's people who are like seeing a ghost town in the Skype, they're not gonna know that they actually have to be going to that Discord because there's a lot more activity happening. Um so it would be, what I think would be useful for this if someone could take ownership over, like, just moving people over, especially people who've been really important in the past, like, kind of reminding, like, Anilu, for example, like, I sent her a message before, but, like, just kind of messaging individual people and be like, hey, like, I noticed you're not on this. It'd be awesome if you can, like, sign on. Um, and then also sending out these periodic reminders in the channels, being like, yo, we're going to shut this down pretty soon, so move, move on over. Um, what, what do you all think about that? Yeah, I, I don't mind sending messages to people if they if I notice that they are not active, like perhaps like uh, I don't know Keyshawn or something like that. But I know he's kind of active and he's kind of learned, it's new to Discord. So like, yeah, if there's somebody like that that I notice, then I can send a message. It's not a problem. Yeah, that sounds good. That'd be really awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you, Joe. Um, Okay, cool. I think we're anything else on the Discord piece. I think we're are we all good there. I think we're good there. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I like the idea of Discord too because you, we have like a, just a general chat room where people could like frequently come in and have conversations. Like, yeah, about you know, because essentially, if we're building a big project together, uh, some kind of benefit that a lot of people will like is a sense of community and belonging. That is kind of like the root of Sangha, but also the building of the Sangha too is its own kind of community. And so if we have the Discord um, and like we have a group of people who are there and they're just frequently in there chatting, yeah, we could make like appointments for, you know, about business or about something specific, but then just having a general place where people come and chat uh, is going to do a lot as well for kind of progress and growth, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I got to get going. I got to get back. Um, my lunch break's over, but I'll watch this, the rest of the chat later on today. Have Thanks for stopping in, Corey. Awesome. Have a good one. See you, Corey. Um, all right, sweet. So next one we'll talk about is just like this Notion. And so currently what you're looking at right now is is the Notion. Uh, it's like, I'm just going to quickly go over this, talk about the structure, how it works. Um, so... For those who are not familiar, Notion is like a collaborative, like kind of wiki. Um, and so we're going to use it basically as our, like our project home um, for managing like our meeting notes, kind of ongoing projects and, and tasks. It's like pretty flexible in how it works. Um, and so I'm just going to go over the structure. So this is the home page. Like if you were to send this to someone, this would be the first thing that they see. Uh, our mission at the top, and like all of our relevant links, our Discord, YouTube, everything. Um, the weekly meeting notes uh, for here you can see the one that we're working on right now um, but then also one, one cool thing about this too is I can automatically add templates as well and so open this up and you can see that this is like a custom template added for the meeting notes it's kind of handy mm -hmm. um, let's leave this before I forget um, all right. 
Uh, the other, another, new, okay, so another part that's familiar to us that transferred over from our Google Drive is our board proposals. Uh, and so these were kind of buried in a Google Drive before. So it'll just be like a little bit easier to navigate and like the status and decision are all here. So it's just like a little bit nicer. Uh, I also added things that we didn't have formal proposals for these, but we did take votes on them, approving the bylaws and the board roles. So I did that. I just added these. Uh, and then, so something that's new, so that's all like familiar. It's kind of transferring what we had before into like this new project home. There's two other concepts that are new though, uh, what are projects and tasks? Uh, and this will be really important for us. So like just manage because we're we'll doing like a lot of like open ended tasks, like people in different time zones coordinating on, on different projects. So we'll start with projects. So this is everything that's in progress. Uh, and these are kind of like the top level goals, right? Like setting up a 501c3, transitioning to Discord, deciding the first project for OSF, right? These are like all the things, at least in my mind, that I think we're working on right now. Uh, and there is a with every project, there's a lead. So that lead is the person who's like driving it forward. Like they're responsible for it. They are um, kind of finding other people who can help on it. They're making sure tasks get done and people aren't blocking each other. Um, and if someone can't lead anymore, they can't fulfill that role, that's okay, but they just have to find another lead to do it. Uh, and it's kind of the responsibility is on them for not having these projects like languish. Uh, so, uh, one interesting part about this, so what you do is you can open this up. You can see there's also a template for how projects work. So this is like a the project template where you can see the uh, the context about it, anything about the project, what, what you're going to be doing, and then also the project tasks. And so this is actually like a cool part of how this notion is set up is that it links tasks to the project. And so you can see I have like these three tasks here about bylaws, incorporation, creating a bank account, right? If we go to the um, the tasks page, you can see the same projects and tasks. There's links, it's like a different view of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is like all of our tasks across all of the projects. Um, so it's like a kind of like nifty way of, you know, viewing top level versus the more like granular. Uh, similar to how there's like owners of projects, there are like owners for uh, individual tasks. So like you still have like a lead for a project, but you could, that lead might be working with multiple people. So for example, like Parker might be fig figuring out the, is the lead for deciding the first project for Open Saga Foundation, but I'm just helping lead this brainstorm, for example, right? Um, and each of these, uh, I didn't have any detail here, but each of these can have like detail about what the task looks like. So the, the idea of this is that we, we're going to be reviewing this every single meeting we have. Uh, so every every uh, you know Monday biweekly meeting, we look at our open projects tasks. The project leads can up. Thing is recorded here. It should be recorded here. Like if you're the project lead, you need to like update the status of your task to make sure everything is accurate and all the information is reflected there. Um, and that's just how we kind of keep on the same page about what's going on even if we're asynchronous so the the goal of this is that you can have someone new show up right so like you can imagine the user experience of this being somebody uh goes on the website they join the discord when they join the discord that the welcome page screen will show you like useful links including this notion so they'll be able to go into this notion and see okay these are all the projects tasks that are going on this is everything that's happening this is where i can start contributing and it's an easy kind of immediately, and that's like the goal of this. Um, cool, I'm gonna pause there. Um, will you, yeah, will you guys initial feedback on this? Like, has, does this feel like it makes sense or would be useful? Yeah, it looks really well organized. Good job. Yeah, it does, it looks great. Yeah, awesome. One question would be, clear. Go ahead. Uh, do, uh, we need to have a paid plan so multiple people can edit it. Oh, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. This is actually important. So uh, we are doing using Notion in a certain way that is free, but it has some unfortunate <laughs> like side effects of that. Uh, one is that like, so I can share this. So I think I shared this to, to be publicly available. So like anybody can look at this, can view mm -hmm. it. They can't edit this page, but I've made like certain parts of this completely editable. So like anybody can like add 
meeting notes, for example, the way, the way I said the sharing. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I mean, you should check this. I'm, <laughs> that may not be completely true right now. Um, oh, yeah, they can, everyone, anyone can edit this page and add new sub pages, new meeting notes. Um, so an unfortunate part of that is that like things could potentially get messed up. Like it's a publicly viewable like wiki. People can potentially like delete things or like mess up configurations. Um, we can try to guard against that as much as we, we can, and we'll like do things to like to do that. And, like, but that's just an unfortunate part of like using the free kind of hacky version of, of Notion. Um, there are ways that we can pay for this and like make it kind of like. So there are multiple users who have accounts, and it's much more, it's more of like a formal type thing. Uh, that does start getting expensive. Once we're a 501c3, we can get like, I think up to a 50% discount on that if we were to choose to do that. But I think this will get us pretty far. That sounds good. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be, it'll be fine for what, what we're doing. And we'll just, we'll take our chances with the sort of that our comma is, uh, We'll continue to to work okay, yeah. and if not, we'll deal with whatever consequences whenever it arises. But yeah, yeah. I think it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, we just hope for the best for now. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Let me go back to our. I I really appreciate it because it makes it a lot more clear what's actually going on. Because I I was noticing that with the Google Drive where I was like, oh shit, this is really confusing, and like it gets confused with my own personal Google Drive and the docs and stuff. And this is nice because it's all in one place. Mm -hmm. I agree. I I was getting lost too. I created most of the docs in the in the Google Drive, and I was still like not really sure what was going on. Um, So yeah, I totally get that. Um, okay. Oh, so I already went through the open projects and tasks. Actually, let's go back to that. So there's a few other things I want to talk about. So we can kind of like actually go through this process of doing of using this task right now and like start using this tool immediately. Um, so one thing is that we were going to, so we can like we we can, you know maybe like ten minutes ago we came up with ideas for how we can help transition to Discord, uh, and so we can add these as tasks right now during the meeting. This is something we should be doing during meetings as like ideas come up. So like write them in, get them in Notion, put someone's name to it. Um, so one is, what, what did we say? You want to change link on website from Skype to uh, Discord. Discord. Uh, and then, Maybe uh, also we could we could pin we could pin the message that you sent within Discord with this link, so that way it's a little bit easier for people to find where this planning. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of what what is called. Uh, the Notion. Plan. Yeah. Notion. Yeah. So so that way it can be easier to find. Yes. Well, I'll have it in the the welcome screen, but I'll also okay. put this to in the journal channel. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. Um, so I'm gonna. Make have Matt be the person responsible for this. Is it Matt Hoskins or Hoskins? Uh, S uh, Hoskins. Okay, cool. So I'll do that one, and I'll I'll like an unfortunate part of this is we're using the, the free version of this. Is this won't automatically notify him. I just like type his name in. So then I'm gonna have to like go and tell Matt like, hey, can you do this? Um, all right. So then the other one was uh, I'm not sure this is really even a task, but it's just like keep like remind people to to move to discord remind people in skype to move to Discord. yeah i, don't, I mean i don't i don't think you need to write it as a task really because like okay. I, I can just keep i can keep an eye on it and like i'm active enough online that i'll just i'll message people when they're oh yeah, cool. yeah. all right Great. when it's when it seems like they should want to be active but they're just not so um all right beautiful and then there's like i, I didn't finish adding responsible people to this but i think uh actually let's just do it now while we're all here uh, so this the file article articles of corporation that's still like not quite done yet, right, Parker? No, that's not done yet. Okay. Uh, or cruise bylaws. Uh, that's done. Decide whether or not we're going to transition to Discord. I think. I think we just decided that. Yeah. Now, right. So yeah. that's done. And um. This, Parker did most of this. So. Parker, um, cool. So I think we're, uh, I think this is kind of up to date with everything. 
ideally in a person. I just have I have one I have one question on things that have been going on. Have is the finances okay for like applying for the five hundred one c? Like I guess there was like somebody that was supposed to like send money and like pay for it. And yep, uh, Matt forwarded me the PayPal money and uh, things have been going smoothly so far. Okay. Um, so yeah, when, when do we think we'll be able to like file the um, the paperwork? Um, right now, I'm waiting for Robert to sign the uh, documents. Uh, so uh, the conflict of interest policy and um, the bylaws need to be signed by me, who is written as the founder, and uh, uh, Robert Cohen, who's written as the secretary. Uh, so once he does that, um, every I have all the instructions, and then I can apply from there. Cool. Um, sounds good. Um, okay. Y'all ready to do the uh, brainstorm? Yeah. Uh, well, before we do that, so the the kind of so we're, we're going to write the uh, takeaways from here, so that we're going to move mm -hmm. to Discord. It goes right here. Going to Discord. We're going to I'll say Joe. Just going to remind folks of Skype. Go on Discord. And Matt will help us change link on website to Discord. And then, okay, what's the other takeaway was I'm uh, going to use this notion for project management. Uh, all right. Let's do it. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, okay, so for this, the brainstorm, like the idea here is we want to just generate as many ideas as we possibly can. Uh, and oh, nice, hey Robert. Hey Robert. Hey Robert, guys. Hey, How's hey, it going? You got here just in time. We're we're about to start the the brainstorm, so I'll, I'll back up a couple seconds here to fill you in. So, um, the the goal of this brainstorm is just to make as many ideas as we possibly can. Is this kind of like a improv kind of like yes and exercise where it's like you want to get like wild and crazy don't hold yourself in back by like what's uh sounds reasonable or like feasible or like the best possible idea just like come up with ideas and then like we'll kind of sift through them at the end and figure out which ones are are, are good um and a lot of what we're trying to do i guess we we're trying to do two things with this one is that we ultimately want to find one project that we can work on and like start on the next couple weeks, right? Like that's that's like really what we want to do. But at the same time, like if somebody's willing to take initiative on a project, like they can just do it, right? And this can give people a lot of ideas for how they can like contribute if they want to lead a project. Um, so yeah, like we want to prioritize one project, but these are things that anybody can pick up if they wanted to, right? If somebody wanted to build like a teacher database or something, even if we didn't do that as our first project, they can, kind of find that idea here and be like, oh, I'm gonna run with this. Uh, so we're gonna kind of, the way that we're gonna do this um, is by connecting it back to the mission statement, because it's some, something that we need to make sure we're doing it as we brainstorm is that everything is actually connected to the mission, right? Like we don't wanna like come up with an idea and then like, after the fact be like, wait, how is this relevant? So the way that we're gonna do that is that we're gonna brainstorm by each com by components of the mission statement. So the first one is like, how can we create Sangha by supporting generosity? And it'll be kind of focused on like tools, ways that generosity can be used for Sangha, right? It'll be like very focused. Uh, another one will be creating Sangha by promoting camaraderie. Uh, and finally, it'll be encouraging integration into existing communities. Um, so we'll kind of do these one at a time, just so it's easier to think about and be like a little bit more focused in how we're brainstorming it. Uh, and yeah. So does, does this make sense to everybody so far? Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and do you guys all have access to this notion and you can like kind of like 
go on this page and like add edits and everything? Yeah. Uh... Yep, I have the tab open. I'm on a phone at the moment, guys, so I won't be able to um, update the Notion directly uh, at this time. Okay. In the, well, in that case, maybe you know, I was going to do something where we like have a silent minute or two and we all write a bunch of ideas. But instead of that, and also maybe for the benefit of people watching the video afterwards, we can just do it live and just like talk through it so Robert can participate as well. Um, so let's let's go through the first one, and I'm just going to take notes as we're as we're talking. Um, so like, let me think, say like, how can we create song advice supporting generosity? And generosity can mean a lot of things. It can mean of like time, money, whatever, right? Uh, but you know, there's there will be overlap with these other ones of camaraderie and integration of existing communities. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, we just want to come up with ideas related to generosity and how to make that song go. So, so one one idea which I really which is just because we were just talking about earlier is like having a physical space. Uh, that'd be like a super generous, awesome <laughs> thing you could do to create song again. Yeah, so uh, to give some, uh, on the idea of generosity, uh, I think what's uh, what's inhibiting that is teachers, uh, I, I think most Dhamma teachers would want to be supported by donations and want to be supported by Donna, um, but in the current uh, cultural, social landscape, that's not a norm. Uh, and it takes a lot of time and uh, to build something around uh, generosity. I think there might be two teachers that I know of who are non-monks, um, Delson Armstrong and Beth Upton, who are uh, who do generosity-based teachings and take Donna. Um, but imagine if you were just a Westerner who you know has a job and is really interested in this Dhamma thing and is. Uh, deciding they want to make a career shift to teaching, uh, how do you do that? I mean, do you quit your job and live without money and try to find students who will donate to you uh, when donations uh, aren't really a cultural thing? Um, and the teacher might make a compromise by asking students to donate to them, but then it's not really donations and generosity in the purest form of the term. Uh, it gets more into just a transactional relationship. Um, so I think these are things uh, for us to explore, see what people are doing, uh, eventually maybe uh, get in contact with teachers and hear their thoughts on it. Um, but maybe a more practical thing that um, what really sprouted the initial idea for this organization is um, the uh, idea of Watts that teachers are limited because they don't have the four requisites uh, unless they are they have an income. They don't have shelter, food, uh, clothing, medical care, unless they have some sort of income. Uh, so um, there are multiple ideas related to uh, getting teachers set up in uh, Watts. Uh, Before we go too deep into that, so are yeah. we still talking about generosity here or are we talking about yeah. encouraging integration to existing communities um i think it overlaps uh but the the main thing is generosity here and uh so so can we reframe what like so i like the context you've been giving is there a way that we can like reframe or redescribe what you've been saying but into like a project is like is there a project associated with um i i mean i can i can definitely think of a project of like uh make it like having some sort of fun to just so that people can travel to existing watts because there's there's a problem that the watts themselves are free but then people who are kind of broke and really into the dhamma don't necessarily have a way to get to the watts um and i know that me like i i would yeah, I don't. I don't even make any money, but I would still chip in money to somebody wanting to like, go, like just get a train ticket 
to go to go places. And I, I agree with what Parker's saying that there are already these spaces that are available that where the teachings are free. So it would be helpful to have some sort of yeah scholarship fund that um, potentially could we you know we could have some sort of way of. Uh, Kind of, I don't know, just talk, like talking to people and seeing if, if they're ready to to take something like this on. Because the danger, obviously, is somebody having a life crisis and being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go here. And then, like, they're not really actually, like, ready to go hang out in a lot for a while. But to have some sort of, you know, method also of uh, just, like, yeah, just, just talking, like like, interacting with people so that there can be... Yeah, some of us that are talking to people that are have been practicing for a while and then deciding, oh yeah, this person definitely is like like could potentially benefit from this, you know. Like I mean I, I would chip in money for Robert to go to a lot. I've been bugging him to do it for a long time. <laughs> well, actually actually I really like that idea. So I mean one way well I'm just gonna write a couple like sub variations of it that's, that are kind of coming to mind as we're saying this. So one is kind of like we have like a common pool of funding that people apply to. Um, and but the, but the thing that made you, that I kind of was thinking of as you were saying that was like almost like this personal interaction you could have something like funding someone individually. Like for example, Parker, like Parker wants to go to a retreat and Parker like hits us up and like, hey, like I want to do this. And then someone can be like, hey, I'm going to sponsor you and I'm going to have a meeting with you. To talk about what you want to do, and then like what's cool about that is it would create like a personal connection, um, and so you like are building this idea of like uh, generosity that's very personal feeling rather than an abstraction. Hmm. It feels less corporate. Yeah. It, uh, it it also it also can be cool to even like make it public to because that that can be nice for for people to say oh like like you know this like this person sponsored so I, I i don't know i think i think some people could actually be like feel feel good about that you know a little bit and it's silly to like ignore that and keep it sort of private or something at least for for me it feels a little bit like that but hey Don Rado. hey guys hey hey hi it's Don Rado. Hey, yes. So, uh, so oh, go ahead. We're, um, we're doing the brainstorm right now. So the brain for this brainstorm, we're kind of thinking through like create wild and crazy project ideas uh, that connect to each part of the mission. And so we're doing this in three phases. One's talking about generosity. The not, next is like how we create song of bias for promoting camaraderie. And the last is about how we create song of by encouraging integration into existing watts. So right now we're brainstorming about how we use generosity to create sangha. Um, yeah, and we and we mentioned and we mentioned so far uh, the ideas were having a physical space where people can have their own self-guided forest retreat, uh, basically just so that people can realize they can go into the forest. Uh, and uh, the other idea was having a fund so that people can travel to existing watts. Uh, basically, the idea was. The watts are free, but some people don't even have money to be able to pay for a train ticket. And wouldn't it be nice? I, like, I would be excited to pay for somebody to be able to go to a watt that doesn't have money for a train ticket. And I think other people would be excited for that, too. Yes, I know what you mean. Now, here's one of the things that's different is, is that there are not really that many retreat centers. And the retreats are not run very often. And so you've got to get the student connected with retreat at a particular time and there may be a distance involved that's not going to be so much of a trouble because there's that many watts and there's no time frame in the sense that they can just show up at the closest watt at any particular time oh a bit of news on that level i have uh we have a friend here named john who just arrived and uh, uh, he missed, he, in fact, he got here on the first day of the retreat at Deepapawan, and so he stayed here, and we did a tour, and, and he's been to Anthony's Retreat Center in Wat Khao Tum. And then yesterday, he went back to Wat Khao Tum, and the monk invited him to stay and move in. 
So we've got two guys who have each one of them found a moth who will mentor them. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> two out of two. So I thought that I would mention that. Yeah, John's now going to be moving into what helps them right here on the island. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, it's it's not as hard. In a way, we can think of is that um, knowing that there is uh, travel and also uh, occasional expenses is kind of like a back um, backstop. Because everybody out there now doesn't know and they think it's so really a big deal that I quit my job and move in. Um, and now we're beginning to prove that it's not such a big deal. And that we can support people so that they figure out that it's not a big deal. Uh, I would also say that possibly we would be using money um, for actually setting up weekend retreats, having food, and uh, perhaps one of the Asian ladies or two, especially if it's a weekend retreat, that's only two meals for the whole retreat. So I think that we can set these retreats up in advance, have everything paid for so that the uh, we can tell the students this this retreat's free. It's been paid for completely. Now you can contribute to the next retreat if you want. Mm. I really, really like it. So I think there was there's two ideas I heard there. I'm gonna kind of make sure we capture both of them. Uh, so one was setting up weekend retreats, and so my understanding of what you're saying is like you pay for, like in a lot of these watts, like you can stay there for free, you can practice for free, but like the food and stuff, someone has to help kind of comp like pay for that food. Um, right. And so that would be something where like, we have some kind of fun and we kind of talk to the, the Watt themselves or or maybe the retreat leader would do that and say, hey, yeah, this is that's, how much. That's the thing that's the best part of it is to get the Watts involved with our organization. Monks that I've talked to really think that it's a good idea. We even got one monk from Chicago who is um, actually participating. So um, that would be a really good thing for us to um, have have the watch already uh, kind of connected together through this organization uh, at the English language uh, Westerner level because they're already connected at the Asian level. Monks already know kind of not everybody, but they certainly know each other a lot, especially at the abbot level. An another thing that I heard that Damarada was saying is that uh, like communicating this in a way that it's not such a big deal, which I, I think is something that we could work on um, through the website is like having some sort of way of communicating um, because there's this notion that, yeah, you have to give up your life. It's this big deal and blah, blah, blah. I got to move to Asia. But like just continuing this message that like it's not that big of a deal. You can just go to the local Watt that is around you and you can even stay as a lay friend. Um, you don't have to give up all of this stuff in order to deepen your own personal practice. Because I think it can be a hindrance for a lot of people to think that, oh my God, how am I going to deal with all this stuff that I have to give up? But well, you can, you can, you know, go for a month and, you know, maybe end up staying. Exactly. That's the whole thing is just to kind of ease into it. And so uh, a, a trip or two to the Watt just to go visit the day or for the afternoon or for the morning or whatever like that. And you do that two or five times and the door begins to open wider and wider. But that's nature. That's not anything actual Buddhist. That's human nature. You see a man on the street, you don't know nothing about him. You meet him tomorrow and you see him for coffee the next day in the uh, restaurant. And pretty soon you've seen this guy enough that now he's familiar to you. So yeah, actually, maybe just to build on that a little bit more, like what are ways that we can communicate that this isn't that this is something that's very doable? Like, where are the best ways that we can get the word out there? Mm -hmm. 
I, I think yeah, like, uh, have, having people's stories could be helpful. I mean, like, like I think already collecting those. Right. That's yeah. With uh, with Keyshawn, like having Keyshawn's Keyshawn story, you know, and um, like I mean, I I can I can write about like places I've had good experiences with, you know, and other people can write about it too, um, and that that would be helpful. Yes, that's exactly what I would say. Is the whole have. Oh, a whole bunch of pages. Each one of them has a testimonial um, of some student who has gone and made friends at the Watt. And this is the Watt that I visited. They had this kind of stuff. And I met these friends. And I stayed this long. That kind of stuff. You know, just kind of informational as well as inspirational. Cool. Good idea. Still have a little blog of uh, just like Keyshawn. I'm glad that Keyshawn finished his. His is the first one we've got as an example. Uh, but uh, uh, Daniel right now has uh, just arrived into Chiang Mai, uh, and uh, I've asked him to do a write up. So we've got a lot of write ups coming as people uh, spend time in Asia or spend time in Watts in, in the West. So I can see a whole section of the website of testimonials. Had none of that before. Uh, that's a really, really good idea. Yeah, I mean, even um, well, there's like testimonials. I think for getting people into a walk, but even like having a getting a weekend retreat, right? Like if we were to successfully set up one weekend retreat, uh, that that'd be like a really awesome thing we could write about. So like, hey, this is what we're about see the model works like we did it here oh yes in fact that would be something that we could look forward to uh in the way of doing a lot of um cell phone video capture of the first retreat that was set up this way a more, more natural retreat. cool that's a good idea sorry so like a proof like do this initial retreat and then the create videos about it and use it to kind of like spread the idea Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question about uh, going back to like the generosity up here. So when we talk about like funding, like we talk about like funding students, right? Like, okay, well, we can pay help pay for their travel, for example. What, what do you think this? No, no, I don't want to fund students. We already have an organization like that. The Open Dhamma Foundation funds students, and I don't like their model very well. How do they fund students? Is by paying for the retreat and paying for the transportation to the retreat within the business model of the American uh, Western Buddhism, um, I would I would prefer not to pay the students the money that then they give to the retreat centers. Let's support the retreat centers directly, so that the students, all of the students, can benefit from it rather than one or two. So if we do it the way where people uh, fund for scholarships, we'll get one or two people who want to go do, uh, let us say, a Chula Dasa retreat. But if we funded the Chula Dasa retreats, then uh, many students would benefit from uh, the fact that the prices are lowered or even uh, uh, down to, to nothing at all, or Donna. That makes sense. And mm -hmm. actually giving the students money but there is another thing that they do do, which is set up, I know of, and that is, is that they um, arranged um, for a rented car because they had five or six students arriving at the airport at the same time. And so they all got the same rented car to go to the retreat. And that was something that was arranged through the Open Dhamma Foundation. So we could do that too, but I'm not thinking that we're going to have much of that situation. But I would like to see all of this done at a kind of a local level so that the people around Chicago, they don't have to go anywhere except down to the Watt, and there's 10 of them in the city. So uh, what, I had a question about that, because you were talking about like supporting retreat centers or like a, a Watt directly. And the, right, I think I'm that, about that. So like yeah. that makes sense, and especially in the context of like a retreat where like there are expenses with that retreat and that, that like that's those are borne by the, um, the center or the Watt. But I'm curious, about, like, how do you think about supporting uh, teachers directly? Like, oh, that's the whole point of it. Yes, if we are supporting, here's the the support of the teacher directly would be 
Um, uh, let us say that a student will give example of Robert, who I think is online with us. He wants Hello. to come to Thailand, and he doesn't have a whole lot of money to where Eric is on VA disability. So Eric's got no problems with money. He's going to be dripping with money for the rest of his life. He's not going to have any possible way of spending all of that money. And so he, with his VA check, could support five, six, seven, eight, nine months once, once they get into Thailand. So this is the idea then, is, is that we could support Robert. Uh, I would say that the, um, the issue is that someone has to get their own plane ticket to come to Thailand or get themselves into the Watt, wherever the Watt is, knowing that we will make sure that they are uh, taken care of, especially before they ordain. Once they ordain, the, the Asian people are going to grab them up and take care of them like a long lost son. That uh, uh, even Pratip mentioned when Matt couldn't find a Watt that he wanted to go to in Florida, uh, Achan Pratip says, well, I've got a friend, ha, 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 I've got a friend who works for an airline. We'll just get you a ticket and bring you up here to Chicago. Okay, this is the kind of generosity mentality that the Asians have that we just don't have in the West. And so when someone ordains, I was fully taken care of, better taken care of than I could imagine while I was a monk. Okay, so once they get become a monk, there's no issue. But before they become a monk, there's going to be a few things to do and buy and, and uh, sort of uh, easing into it. And there will be some expenses, some money. And uh, when guys quit their job and come to Asia as the example, because we've got both West and the East, and some will want to come uh, to visit here or to stay in Thailand. And so they've got enough money to build up. But then the terror of well, what happens when my three or $4,000 or $10,000 runs out? The answer would be is, is that don't worry about that, that if you need something, we'll get it for you. And it looks like that Thailand is getting really much easier about visas now. Um, Damarato, I have a question about visas. Um, how did uh, you mentioned John earlier? How did he get a visa to um stay in Thailand longer than like forty five days? Well, this is the thing that I find strange because Thailand is really getting weird about that kind of stuff from being overly, overly strict, not even allowing any planes to land from China and that kind of stuff into more open now than I've ever seen. When um, uh. when John arrived, uh, when he went through immigration, they didn't even put a stamp, not one. He showed me his visa, and every stamp in his visa is from other countries. All they gave him was a telephone number and a piece of paper that says, call this number in 45 days. Mm -hmm. Wow, have things changed, okay? And so um, <laughs> there's one more point in that. Pam now has a friend who's working in the immigration office here on the island. And that's what we've needed all along. We've got a friend now who's actually in the immigration office. And so um, there's going to be no problem with that. Um, so all John has to do is to call, but... Uh, probably a better thing to do rather than calling the number that they gave him in Bangkok is to just go to the visa office and talk to our friend. Go over mm -hmm. there and say what paper to work you need to fill out and get her done. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, fact, one thing I, that I can say about that, easy. one well, thing I can say about the change with that is that, uh, <clears throat> like, even though they don't stamp it, it's because they like they scan passports nowadays, so like they're totally aware of like when you enter country just because everything's electronic now even if you don't have a stamp in your passport because it, it was the same thing when i went that they didn't they didn't stamp my passport that was that was a long time ago uh but they were totally aware still of when i entered the country um and from what i understand in thailand and i don't know if it's still like this but back then it was like you just had to travel to a border country for the day 
and then you come back and you just make these border runs. Uh, That's back, the old back way. That's the way that I did it years and years and years ago. Is a three month visa and then out you go. Nowadays, no. Um, they have ninety day extensions, ninety day extensions, and that kind of stuff. And so they ma they've made it much easier now. And there, that's um. especially true because COVID decimated the entire nation's economy because Thailand has so much of their infrastructure involved with tourism, and tourism just about died. So there's another item on that list that you guys may be amused at, and that is is that Thailand's the first country in Southeast Asia to relax their marijuana laws. So now ganja is free, not free to buy, but I mean it's freely open and available. Um, so that's another issue of showing that the uh, Thais are now really interested in getting their tourism back, because it's, it's still nothing compared to what it was. So I, I do, I think this is useful though. I do want to make, just be mindful of time. We have only, you know, 20, 30 minutes left. And uh, I think we have a lot of topics up in the brainstorm. Um, yeah, so let's get back to, uh, I just wanted to mention that part about it being much easier now. And so Thank you, Damarasa. We can support people. That's not an issue. I'd be willing to support three or four guys all by myself. But if so, you had 30 or 40 or 75 or 200 guys in Thailand or uh, around in various spots, I'd need some help with that. <laughs> well, so I just want to make sure I understand this supporting the teachers directly, like what we actually mean by that. So when supporting, it sounds like what we're thinking of this as is like basically like a backstop of people want to get to, they probably want to ordain is what we're thinking of. And like on the way to ordaining or costs, it's expensive. People may not have the money they need. And we can be kind of like well, they think they might have not the money they need. They don't really need the money because he, if you are a layman living in the Watt, there will always be enough food and shelter. So the most two important issues, in fact, all of the requisites, food, shelter, you probably, when you come in, you've already got enough clothing to last for quite a long time. And so uh, medication would be the only issue. And since uh, uh, Tainan more or less has free medical care for monks mm -hmm. uh, and that I live, I, I'm a good friend with the nurses uh, at the local hospital. And so I'm, I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about my medical care for the rest of my life to where in the West medical care is a major issue. Housing is a major issue. Well, I just want to make sure I understand how this works, though, because when I think of a teacher, I could think of like, okay, well, one is, are they trying to become a teacher that ordains? Is is one version of it? Everyone's that that category in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's where, that's where everybody is. Well, because you, you you have like your Daniel Ingrams and your Delson Armstrongs in the world or whatever who like. We don't ordain, and I'm not sure if we are explicitly saying like, hey, like we are the kind of teachers that we want are those who are like, that's how we think of what a teacher is or someone who's going to actually ordain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's also, I, I know. That's actually Sorry, an God. issue in Thailand that the Thai people would rather have a monk do the teaching than a layman. And that's traditional. But if you think of it from the perspective of uh, the layman, wants some money because he's afraid of his life to where the monks are just already taken care of. They don't need anything. We don't have to go donate to the monk. In fact, donating to the monk himself is verboten. Where the Westerners say, oh, well, you pay for the retreat and you get your room and board and you pay for that. And then you have to make the teacher donation. That's the way that they're trying to uh, derange it so that the uh, uh, <laughs> the laymen who are teaching don't have to feel so guilty about charging money. But uh, within the Thai tradition, the monks themselves who are teaching do not expect nor want any retribution for their teaching. It's free of charge. All that's interesting is the, uh, um, the food and shelter. Uh, and well, let's see. Oh, sorry. Uh, but let's say that you were to, you, someone went to ordain, would they most likely be, need to go to like, you know, 
uh, Thailand or Myanmar or whatever first to ordain, or is there a path where they could ordain within the U.S. or like a West, another Western country? There are a lot of ordinations in the West. They yeah. already are doing that. It happens on a regular basis, but it normally happens within the, uh, the Asian community. But I yeah. do know of probably eight or ten Westerners who over the years have ordained, actually ordained in the West, stayed at the Wat that they ordained at. That happens on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I know you can, I mean, you can ordain at Amravati in the UK. I mean, like, and there's other places in the UK that, that you can, that you can ordain. So you don't necessarily have to go to, to Thailand to do that. Or you can, no. you can ordain at Plum Village and... Cool. Amravati also there uh, they can they could ordain at um, Plum Village. Yeah. But these two places uh, along with the Baigiri are kind of unique and special because they're set up for Westerners from the get go. Okay. However, I'm talking about um, what Greensboro and what Buddhism and in uh, Los Angeles and in San Francisco, there's six or seven watts, and that uh, there was a young Westerner who ordained at the Fremont Watt. He was you know, many years. Another one in Orlando, a, a white man, <laughs> joined and became a monk in Orlando. I had nothing to do with it. I met him after he was already a monk. I've met many of the young Lao men who ordained in, in America. And so, yes, ordinations in America is <laughs> it's something that's it's a celebration. The whole community will come to the uh, uh, if a if a Westerner come, the entire Asian population will come for that ordination to support. That's awesome. Cool. Well, I think we, we have a, a lot of good ideas for generosity. Before we move on to camaraderie, do you guys have any kind of other ideas related to song and generosity before we we uh, leave this section? Uh, no, I think the ideas you have are great. So far. All right. Um, let me go on to the next one. So, um, let's talk about how we can like create sangha by promoting camaraderie. Um, so, one thing that's come up before, and I know Domorado's brought this up in some previous calls, is like having like a a teacher uh, sangha call, like a like a like a weekly. And yeah. so. Uh, if I'm curious if you could like give a little more detail on that, Don Murado, of like what you meant by that and like what the content of that call would be like. Well, I can see it in the use in two ways. One is, is that it will, uh, by invitation, an individual teacher will, um, let us say, be in charge of this particular um, call. And what he will do there is he will give a practice teaching. He will teach the Dhamma listen, being listened to by people who he knows, knows enough Dhamma that he knows what he's uh, doing. So it gets them into the realm. I mean, uh, if you uh, are just talk, chatting with your friends and you tell them something, that's one thing. But if you're, let us say, um, chatting with um, a particular knowledgeable group, let us say like theoretical mathematicians, and you're going to be speaking to them about theoretical math, you kind of need to know what you're talking about. Okay, so that's what I'm uh, looking for with, with the teacher calls, is, is that it's going to be teachers listening to teachers teach the Dhamma, and then the other aspect of that would be teachers becoming friends with other teachers in a non-competitive way. But they don't know each other and there's no vehicle for them to find each other that in fact schools um, that teach students how to become a, a meditation teacher, they don't even foster this. But there's no Sangha in, uh, 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 let us say with Jack Cornfield when he's teaching on online and charging money for that teaching. He does not make his student body into a Sangha, but we could. Because we've got the idea that that's what we want to do. We want to take teachers that are newly budding teachers and give them an opportunity to be in communion with uh, more senior teachers and also to practice teaching. 
that's one thing that I really would encourage among our group too. And I'm really pleased that Scott's taken up. And so Scott's once a week is uh, managing uh, the, the UK call on Wednesday evenings. I really, really like that. <laughs> and I'd like to see more of it. To give each one of you an opportunity to start teaching the Dhamma Maybe give a talk this month and then give a talk next month until you get over the terror of teaching the Dhamma. And, and we, when we say like teachers, like this could be lay people or can, who are like interested in teaching, or is it people who are like These, on track This would be for the lay people who were still in the West. Got it. Okay. Some of which may have just gotten their own credentials already and are out experimenting and helping those guys to get into the what. But they, but also to give a forum, I'm looking for a forum for uh, for the a teachers forum where they can yeah. ask questions, uh, come to some uh, community, some uh, getting their own bylaws, so to speak, together. Got it. And just to rephrase what I think you're saying, so it'd be like it could be lay people in the West who maybe they don't even like know if they want to ordain at this point. They might just be interested in teaching the Dhamma. And then there are pe maybe people who are a little further down the path and they're like considering ordaining. Uh, and then there are people who maybe like they might be fully ordained uh, monks at this point and they still mm -hmm. want a community of teachers. Does that sound right? And then the, we have the elders. The elders are another part of it that I would like to see folks like, oh, Ajahn Sumedho, Ajahn uh, 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 <laughs> Amaro, uh, Amaro rather, uh, and uh, Pisano from that lineage, and also uh, Santicaro and uh, Buckman and uh, Dhamma Vitu and myself from Ajahn uh, Poe's uh, and Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa's lineage. Uh, et, et cetera, like that. So I'd like to see elders in it, the old Western men who have been in the Sangha for 30 or 40 years, way past retirement age. I'd set the minimum age of the elder group at 70, which means that even Daniel Ingram doesn't fit yet. <laughs> he hasn't I, been I, I think long. just a, this is a small point, like, just so it's not so like men focused. I mean, you could say old Western monks or or nuns, like because there there could be there could Absolutely. be nuns also. Excellent, excellent point. I do not want to sound chauvinistic simply because of the numbers, but I would highly, highly uh, want to put a lot of our own effort into making sure that when women come, that they have a place to go to. And I know of several already. In fact, I know of one in Australia, I know one in California, I know one in England. But there's got to be other places that we don't know about yet. Places that where the woman asks, well, where can I go? The answer is, well, here's a whole long list of places. Find one close to you and hang out. Cool. This, um... That makes sense. And what do you think about people who aren't necessarily trying to teach the Dhamma listening in on these calls? Do you think that would be inappropriate for them to listen, or do you think it could be useful? Absolutely. Not only that, but many of them will come with that mentality this month, and after a few months, they'll say, well, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. If that happens with everybody. You're you're not talking about individually different than that individual over there. You're talking about one individual in the process that he's going through. Got it. That that makes sense. Okay. This this idea feels like it's becoming like concrete and makes sense. Uh, do you guys want to add anything more to this idea before we move on and keep thinking of new ones? Um, no. Nope. Sweet. All right. So maybe. Nope. Maybe for, we can keep thinking of other ideas to promote camaraderie. So do you guys have any other ideas that come to mind of like ways we can promote camaraderie between the Sangha? Um, this was kind of talked on in the previous tab, um, but uh, a model sort of like where someone can um, uh, give their situation and give their problem um, and be connected with someone who is uh, maybe well networked or has been through that problem before of wanting to get to a watt. Maybe they could uh, 
submit a form of some kind with their information uh, and then they'd be connected with someone maybe nearby or something to help them. I imagine this would be a little further out than where we're at because right now um, it'd just be someone in the Sangha and they can get the information here. Um, something similar to this uh, is uh, 80,000 hours. Um, it's like a uh, a resource blog article thing um, with uh, careers looking to better the world. Um, uh, they have like uh, podcasts and specific guides. Um, and they have a similar thing where uh, someone can get one and one advice. They can apply and they'll get matched up with someone who's volunteered to that and is experienced. Oh, that's an excellent idea. One, one idea that I that I had is um, is getting some in like in person meetups. Um, I know that like Keyshawn met up uh, with um, sorry I forgot I forgot his name the guy who's ordaining in Thailand, um, and I know some other people oh, in Chicago. and Robert Cohen. Yeah. All okay. And I know. Some, yeah, and I know some other people in Chicago have met up. I I just was on a call with somebody who was in Chicago, and I said, "Oh, you should get in contact with Keyshawn." Um, and so, you know, it seems like there's a lot of people in that area. Um, and obviously, you know, in person sangha is you know a lot more effective than uh, online. So more of that, um, and just having an avenue. Like, I would love for more people to understand that. Like, I mean, I. I would love for people to want to come here that are serious and want to actually practice and like just hang out or whatever, you know, um, I've offered it. This idea. I like that. So let's put that on our list of things to put into the website as an area for meetups. Hey, I'm in Chicago and I go to this Watt and anybody want to come to the Watt with me or any of that kind of stuff would be the way that we could get those meetups up. Oh, yeah, I got that on the list. I really like that idea. Um, There was a site years ago that I had a little bit to do with, and it seemed like that it was too localized and too time oriented. But they would set a time and a date and a particular location for the meetup. And I would rather have it much more individually oriented that here, here, I'm here, and let's let's meet up. And the time and the place is irrelevant. Yeah, I've, I've off, like I, there there might be uh, one one person that uh, was going to come visit because I've I've offered to a few people that you know I have I have room and if anybody wants to come and practice then you know I I have I grow I'm a farmer so I have plenty of food so <laughs> cool so like so one like one version of this is like standing offers to stay at each other's homes and practice together uh, yeah pretty much yeah and then another the other version is like a set time and in place like you know the OSF or like yeah or or like uh some somebody offered to be they were like oh like you should come to Amaravati with me uh you know so something like that like we're gonna go to this place together that I've been to and I can introduce you to the other people that are here yes exactly so I like that idea Joe that's an excellent idea cool that's awesome I mean and what's cool about that too is it could be just like as simple as having a channel in discord is like meetups channel where like people can just like talk about it loosely without having too much structure behind it um cool yeah and just to build off of the parker your idea earlier like i just want to kind of make sure i understand is when like it sounds like so it's kind of like a buddy program i guess almost and i, and I guess like is the buddy program specifically is it about like practice in general like just people supporting each other's practice or is it kind of more specifically geared towards like getting into a lot and getting into retreats and integrating yourself in once i think that would that structure would probably be more oriented towards worldly things like getting resources or uh connections uh just because uh, the organization as a whole is less of a uh teaching organization and more of a organization organization more of a meta level thing it's not we're teaching this specific thing. It's we're helping people who are teaching this thing uh, find things out. Does that make sense? Uh, Or get to the right place? Uh, Cool, I really really like that. Um, Do you guys have any other ideas for camaraderie here? 
the old site, I'm not sure that we're going to do that this time. I, we can talk about it over time. But one of the things that we had originally put in there was to gather up uh, and get in touch with teachers all over the world who were really Donna, uh, Donna oriented and then let their names be on the website. You guys know the old website. I'm not sure that we want to do that this time, but um, the idea of doing it would be more of those teachers being good friends with each other rather than one, each individual teacher who don't know those other guys just happened to have their name on a website where people could call them. That that was the way that it was set up. I would rather see it as uh, a particular group of teachers who were on the website, but that they knew and supported each other, all about friendship. And, and um, but that can be done at a later time. I think that the way that we want to do it in the beginning or the first uh, emphasis is to start advertising that, hey guys, if you want to know about Buddhism, go where you can find people living it. Go to the what? Go hang out. Okay, so, but there's actually, as over time, the website can grow. And so we have to kind of take priorities. And I think that the first time that we did it, uh, the priorities were wrong. And you guys have gotten the priorities so far set up correctly. Let's do this one at a time. Let's get that paperwork done. And now we'll get the website done. And with the website, we'll get the uh, donation thing fixed up. And then the next item on that would be getting the newsletters going. Yep. And after we get the newsletters going and the website up, that's when we can all go out on the Reddit and uh, everything and start talking it up, maybe taking some paid advertisements on uh, uh, places like Tricycle or Reddit or whatever. And so we can uh, get the word out, but we really need to have things set first. And so I like the way that uh, that we're approaching it this time, rather than just getting a website up as fast as we can and, and then uh, put some teachers on it. That That's the way that it got started, but that wasn't a sustainable model. Doing the, uh, the right paperwork for you guys have gotten the right idea about that. And so, Tyler, congratulations you and Park and Joe uh, getting the board of directors going, all of that kind of stuff, getting it formalized. That's a good thing. So now the next thing we do after we do that is get the website up. But what's the first things that are important the website? And I would say things like testimonials mm -hmm. and um, uh, offers as well as uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, oh, there are several videos. I don't even know where we uh, all are, but I have actually given several talks on on this topic. And so um, we could do another talk or we could find some of those old videos. There was one video that was done on Zoom uh, that Robert, who still lives here in Thailand, by the way, he's still a good friend of mine. And um, he and I walked through the, all of the stuff about going to a Watt and what to do and what to find and all of that. That video is still up. I think it has the word ZM in it or the letter ZM for the meaning that it was a Zoom call. So that one would be easy to find. And yeah. it would be good to put, put that video up on our website. So an another thing we can do too that could be even be easier, and actually, Dumb I just want to make sure you see this because I may miss the first part of this, is that uh, there's a new... We created an, it's called a notion. It's kind of like a project management, like w wiki tool. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is a way to keep track of everything that we do, right? It has all of our meeting notes here, has our, the projects we're working on, has the tasks that we're working on. And then finally it has the, uh, mm -hmm. all of our propo board proposals, right? So it's kind of like a central home for everything. And so potentially an easy thing we can do that I've seen a lot of other projects do, like decentralized projects do, is we can start building this out so we can create kind of like our educational resources on this wiki because that's kind of like what it's almost meant for yeah uh -huh. right that would be something that we could put on there uh before it's put up on the website the version of it is that's there now is there any way for mass editing can i edit this thing if i wanted to put some stuff into it 
Yeah, so um, we can make this, well, we can make this publicly editable so that you can edit, edit it as well. So yeah, we can do this so that you can edit directly. Okay. Um, but we, what we could, well, we can talk about this afterwards, but we can kind of make like a, like a, you know, uh, a education page. Oh, I can't scroll this. I'm I'm moving my mouse up and down, and and you're moving it around yourself, and, <laughs> and, and my mouse has nothing to do with what's on the screen. I got that. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't, don't worry. we can talk about this later. But like this, is, I think this is a good idea of a a project. I'm gonna go back to this now. It's basically creating like a uh, <laughs> educational resources in the in the notion, in the notion about how to get connected to a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think you know that Domrado, if you'd be up for it, that it could be cool to have another talk, like not right now, obviously, but I mean, with somebody, just because things do change, and so like you know, you you've had people that have had experiences, and maybe there's there's new stuff that has come up and new ideas or whatever, so it could be useful. I know you talk so much anyway, so like, you know, I I could sit on a call with you for an hour, or somebody else can, and then just go over the you know the new the new stuff and and what we've learned from other people's experiences and things like that cuz yeah I, and i noticed like one thing with the internet is like if something's like been 3 years ago that's considered like ancient now you know uh, just with how people's mindset is so it can be good to have something fresh maybe absolutely yes we need to have enough people involved with the website so that it stays fresh that we add new content that we put new videos up, take old videos down, add new information about various temples. In fact, one of the things that I'd like to do with that that's a little bit different than the uh, testimonials is to actually have um, a rating system, a, uh, a Yelp watch on our website. So that people could say, yeah, I went to that one and nobody spoke English and uh, um, uh, they were too busy to talk to me. That kind of thing, because there's going to be watch like that. Not every watch is going to be uh, as easily accessible as when we have good introductions. But really, everything that's happened is with Robert is because of the introductions. First, we introduced him to <clears throat> Achan. Um, to Nit, then to Achan Reed, and then Achan Reed introduced him to another monk in Seattle. And then he, then he stayed at that watch. So this is the way that it will work, is the abbots all know each other, and we don't have a clue. <laughs> but uh, by putting, well, I've got a clue because I was in that community, but it's been 15 years since I was in that community, so I don't know what's going on, but the best parts of it will still be there. So, um, yeah, having a watt rating system so that people will know which watts to avoid rather than uh, everybody's on his own and if people go to the same big watt and they're all disappointed with that watt, it would be better to have that kind of information uh, about which watch to go to. So that would be stuff. And I would like to actually see people being able to uh, to do that online. In other words, uh, rate this what? There has a, a you know a, uh, a text uh, box for them to uh, say what they got from each individual what. So and maybe even have more than one group. So five or six people go uh, through our system, and then five or six people will write comments about that what. I think we can set that kind of thing up on our website, no problem. But the testimonials, I think that we would want, in fact, to do that off, off of the what, like uh, like Keyshawn sent it to me and I sent it to you, and now we'll put that on the website. So blogs and, and testimonials will put the website management, but with the, um, the what ratings, I think we should allow people online to add that, put that in. What do you think? The, well, the, the only thing that I see with the watt rating thing compared to the testimonials is that like the amount of people that have visited a place that are going to take the effort to put a rating down, 
I wonder how active it's, it's actually going to be and how like comprehensive. I want that to be well policed. Okay. Yeah, that that all, that was also a concern well of like, yeah, of like people like yeah, just having a like their own personal bad experience and then and then wanting to to say something about because it, it, it could turn into like people are only going to give negative reviews because that's generally how reviews tend to work uh, and and just that it might not be that active and if and if something is not that used then people are like oh why is this website so dead um, yeah. because. <laughs> Not many people give reviews. I don't know. But, That's just, just some I would give reviews, but I don't know how many other people would. Yeah, I guess some context for this brainstorm is that, like, right now we're not as concerned about, like, what's feasible or what we want to do first. We're just coming up with ideas. So, yeah, I totally, like, the what rating system is, like, an awesome idea. Um, that There are reasons that might be more or less difficult than some, some of the other options. Um, but I think, but, like, some an initial reaction to that is, like, it, of all the things we could make, it's like probably the most difficult thing we could do together. Mm -hmm. um, but and all, basically everything else we've talked about so far is much, much, much easier. Um, and so I do this is a great idea though, and I think we should continue to explore it. Um, I, I know we're at time here. I just want to make sure before we kind of cap this off, do you guys have any other ideas here about how we can encourage integration into the into the Watts? No, I just point out that um, the uh, eighty thousand hours has something uh, similar for different careers. They have guides and stuff, um, so we could use them as inspiration uh, if, uh, for those blog posts, uh, or if we're ever doing some more formal guides for how to say stay at a Watt in X place or go for um, like in Thailand. What would the process be like, or specific things like that? That's an idea. Yeah, and just about it. I, I really. Put, oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, I would put that uh, we might, in fact, want to have a section about Thai watch as opposed to a uh, Western watch, uh, in there, that it's a little bit complicated. And Westerners who they are, if they if you just arrived at the airport in Bangkok saying, oh well, I'm going to go to Thailand, and all I've got is a plane ticket, and I arrive in Bangkok. Where do we go from here? Or if we, if we know the name of a Wad and the name of the city that it's in, where do we go from here? Well, see, I've already been all over Thailand, and I fairly well know the transportation system. And so one of the things that we would put on the Thai section would be, why don't you give Damarato a call <laughs> so that he can give you the information that you need uh, to make your trip safe and secure and non-terrifying because the, the airport in Bangkok is a massive, massive building. It is absolutely terrifying if you don't know your way around. And most probably nobody knows that there's a subway down in the basement of the airport. But if you tell people that in advance, so even having some travel information about coming to Thailand may be a good thing to put on the website. Yeah, and, well, and I mean, like Bang Bangkok itself is totally disorienting if you've never traveled, if you're like an American or something and never traveled. I remember the first time going there and I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, I know there's a song about that. One night in Bangkok will make a hard man humble. <laughs> Even as even as basic advice like how to not get scammed, you know, which is you, like you know people like you know sh should be able to Google this, but it's it's not totally obvious to, to everybody that like, hey, like you know you need to like kind of be aware of like how to not get like totally scammed, uh, just you know when you first arrive. <laughs> I remember the first the first taxi driver I, I got in with. He's like, "What what do you want? Do you want uh, girls or drugs?" And I was like, "Oh, okay. The temple sounds nice. Like you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know <Right>. about this." <laughs> right. So, the, <clears throat> so that driver is um, <clears throat> looking at the way you're dressed and the beard and the hair and all of that, and he says, "Oh, you're just a standard hippie." So you're either here for sex, drug, or rock and roll, and we know the areas in town to s send you to that. Um, <clears throat> and he would be quite surprised if you says, oh, well, I want to go to what 
uh, Patu Salaram, and <laughs> which is one of the big wats in Thailand and is very close to the uh, uh, downtown city. But anyway, the point that I'm making is is that, uh, yeah, putting some of that stuff in, one of the things would be make sure that the, that the uh, taxi driver turns the meter on. Now, that could be a problem. And, and the only problem that I remember is, is that uh, one time that I needed transportation and some uh, woman off the street gave a taxi driver 200 baht and says, take this Western idiot monk to what uh, uh, <clears throat> Chulipatan. And I dummy, stupid me really stupid thing told him to turn the meter on and he says we don't need that and i said you know well i don't know what to be it wound up being about 400 baht for that taxi driver and he didn't care he was taking a monk and the other lay person gave him 200 baht that was a time for me to chill and i didn't <laughs> and i remember that that was one of the most stupid things i did as a monk is insist that that taxi driver turn the meter on and not only that but part of the reason that it was kind of expensive that way is because he took extra care for me that he didn't just say oh the watch over there you go across the street no he went way way down out of his way to make sure that i was well taken care of and the meter had already gotten way over 300 baht, and so I was sitting melting in the back seat out of stupidity and, and bad feelings because I made him turn that meter on. But that's an important point because otherwise they'll charge you a huge amount of money if they don't have the meter. But if they've got the meter on, then they have to charge according to the meter. They've also gotten very sophisticated. The, uh, uh, the taxi union in Bangkok they have their own websites and lost and founds and all kinds of things. So there is very much up, but you're right. There are scams. The bigger scams will be in the Sam lore, the three wheelers, the tuk tuks. Those are where the scams are, where taxi drivers are much more organized and regulated and have to have their meters and all of that kind of stuff. So that would be one thing to put on the website. If you have a choice between a taxi and a Samlor, take the taxi. Use the meter. Hmm. Those the oh. Samlors, they're used to just moving back and forth between the drug dealers and the uh, uh, the brothels. That's what they're doing. They <laughs> so I like that. Yeah, we could put that. Uh, what to do if you're coming to Thailand? That would be something that we in the. Uh, I'll take I'll take take that. I'll write that up myself. Cool. Well, yeah, I think we've got. Oh, sorry, if you were going to say something. I was just, I was just going to say one, like, just one other, like, quick thing, just because it hasn't been mentioned, but just because Damarava sometimes has talked about practicing on your own in the wilderness, and Keyshawn wrote up his thing about it, and I've tried practicing on my own in the wilderness, and it can be a nice thing. So just since we're brainstorming, just, uh, yeah, it could, it could be some, something to, yeah, just have like. Hey, this is how you actually do it. Because like when I was trying to figure out what to do, it's just like guessing kind of, you know, and was like, I, I guess this is how I, you know, I, like, I mean, I've practiced with other people enough, so it's fine, but I can see other people who haven't, um, that could be nice to have some sort of framework or something to work on of like, Hey, this is how you practice on your own in the wilderness. Um, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. In, in fact, uh, part of the introduction to that would be uh, people reading um, Kishan's uh, blog about him going to the wilderness. So having several of that, that's, that's maybe one of the things we could do it in the sense of having a blog, oh, this is how you should go and do it in the woods. Or we can have testimonials about this is what happened to me in the woods. So we can do both of those, in fact. Cool. No, I really, these are all great ideas. Um, and I think we've got, unless anybody has any like last minute things to add, because we are like over time at this point. Um, the kind of, the goal of this is to collect a bunch of ideas, not prioritize them. Uh, but then what we're going to do, and I think Parker's leading this, this process is really figuring out how we want to prioritize what we do first, right? Like 
we can't do all of these things immediately. We're gonna have to pick one or two things and then do those. Uh, and so that's what, that's kind of like our next task until the next meeting is like figure out a framework to prioritize them somewhat based on like the impact and then the effort. Uh, and then we want to get some like easy wins, right? It's kind of like practice where you want to kind of do something simple, have that succeed so that as an organization, we can feel like, hey, we're doing the right thing. This is, this is working, we're making progress. Uh, and so we kind of want to get those reps under our belt. Uh, and so, yeah, I think this has been like a really awesome session. If you're listening to this uh, on, on YouTube, you can continue to add ideas to this, um, to this notion. Uh, and then apart from that, yeah, I think we're, I think that's it. So yeah, I think the, the next call we're going to have is we're going to basically kind of have these, these ideas prioritized and then people who want to lead the projects are going to volunteer to lead it. Right. And a project lead is going to be the person who's pushing it forward, helping coordinate volunteers, um, and really driving this thing forward. So that's what we'll be doing next week is just figuring out who's going to do what. Yeah, and I, I would just say, let, like, let's just chat about this stuff, too, because, like, I think a lot of these things sound fun, and, like, I don't necessarily think that you need, like, a like a leader for some of them. Some of it is just, like, hey, let's just, like, work on this, because this sounds fun. So, you well, know. I think I think part of the, the, the challenge, though, is that when there isn't someone who's, like, leading an effort, things just get lost and buried in physical. Right. So, for example... Yeah. Keyshawn wrote a blog post and he spent a lot of time on it and it looks great. It's an awesome blog post, but there isn't a leader for creating a testimonials like section in the website or the notion. And so if we're not careful, his testimonial will get buried and lost forever. Right? Yeah. Let's work on that. Yeah, and so, sure. so basically that's what, where it's helpful to have a leader and someone who's accountable is saying like, Hey, we're, there's no boss here. Right. But someone has to take responsibility and say, Hey, I'm going to make this thing happen. I'm going to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. Has anybody been in contact with um, um, uh, Annie Lou recently? Because she had gotten yeah. started and now I haven't heard much from her. Yeah, I, I, I messaged her on Skype, but I haven't been able to get in contact with her. Um, but we do, we still have Matt helping out on the website. So I think a lot of the things we need to do as well will be very minimal work on the website. We do a lot of stuff in Notion as well that doesn't require like special skills. Um, but yeah, I haven't been able to get in contact with her. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, yeah but, that would be one thing that we, all of us non techie web people, non web people can sit and job on it all day about what we want on the website. But if there's no one to actually put it on the website, we're not going to make much progress that way. Yeah. So, and that's like what's a, a cool thing about using Notion is that like we can kind of um, do things without being blocked by a developer. So with this kind of wiki tool I've been showing, like we can just start making things immediately as soon as we think of them without having to rely on anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems great. I mean, I think I think it could be fun to learn how to like do website editing, but like, I mean, I, I don't know hardly anything, so I'm kind of limited there um, on what I can actually do. But I think a lot of these things sound fun and I would be happy to work on it with other people. Yeah. Yeah, so the next, so for everyone, everyone listening at home, like next week or next meeting is the time we're going to figure out, like if you're excited about any of these ideas, anything you want to do, you can like decide to just do it. It's like, there's no gatekeeper. It's kind of up to you. Mm -hmm. I assume that some of the more technical stuff on the website would be um, the, um, the membership list with various classifications in the, the list. And those classifications are intended to design about which um, newsletters an individual will get. Yeah, I think, so I think we can uh, have a newsletter just for teachers. We can have a newsletter for those who are already in Watts. We can have newsletters for uh, the donors that have already made donations and things so, like that. So that would be a different, a new project. So I'm gonna write that down on the brainstorm list of like a newsletter for, I'll put that in the camaraderie section, like a newsletter for teachers. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. It's just it's another yeah, project that someone would have to own and take take control over. Okay. Yeah, so we got lots of stuff to stay uh, this barnstorm on, and I really, guys, I'm so pleased that we've gotten the uh, 5013C as far as we have. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for doing that. You and Parker and and uh, 
Christopher and Ian have all contributed to that. Yeah, it's been a fun, fun process. So we're making progress. We're on, we're on a roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Thanks. it's the start. And now, now it's start, starting next week. We're actually starting doing stuff. So I think it's going to feel, uh, start feeling good. Excellent, excellent. Oh. All right, y'all. Free break. See you guys. Good to see you all. Bye. It was great bye -bye. to see you guys. Thank you very much again. Okay. Bye bye.